we do have a section where we talk about gifts. So I'll give Emma this there and tell her to come to the front. Right. Um, can we switch off, 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 off phones? Because um, we've had some interference issues before. Good morning, everyone. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Well, my name is Ben Kautzer. I'm the rector here, believe it or not, <laughs> um, at uh, St. Leonard's and in um, uh, Wooden St. Lawrence. Uh, and it's lovely to welcome you all here to St. Leonard's Church here on Christmas morning. Woo. Now, yeah. I don't know how long you have been a coiled spring of anticipation waiting for this morning to just let loose your inner elf. But the day has come, uh, and it's a wonderful time to celebrate. In fact, we've had cascading celebrations in the journey uh, to this moment. We had a beautiful um, set of services happening over the last couple of days, um, especially yesterday. We had our virtual crib service um, here at St. Leonard's, which uh, everyone can watch on our YouTube channel. Um, we had a beautiful crib service down at Wooden St. Lawrence, and then we were gathered here just a few hours ago um, for our midnight service. And I did wonder whether um, I would, what would happen first? Would I go to sleep first, or would our boys wake up for Christmas Day first? <laughs> that was the big question in my mind. And I'm pleased to report that we have already had a Christmas miracle. Ooh. Hallelujah, indeed. My children slept in till seven in the morning. Yeah. Ted and Gregory, you are legends. That is unprecedented and will never be repeated, I'm sure. However, it came. It came at just, it came at just the right time. Well, it is wonderful to be gathered uh, virtually for those who are watching from home and for everyone who's here with us this morning on a very joyous day. Um, and in the midst of the fun and the silliness um, of this service, um, there's a lot of profound things that this moment represents about God arriving with us in the person of Jesus. Um, and, you know, I'm also conscious um, that for many people, uh, today isn't the day that you wanted it to be, um, that things haven't uh, lined up in the way that you expected for Christmas Day. We know... Some members of our church family um, have had positive tests and are stuck at home, um, cut off from their families on the one day they're expecting to be together. We know that some people have had their family plans profoundly disrupted by the events of the last fortnight. So as we enter into this service, we are praying for everyone uh, connected to, uh, to this church family, um, particularly those for whom Christmas Day is going to be a challenging one this year in ways that they hadn't anticipated. Um, so shall we, wherever we are, uh, whether we're full of excitement, whether um, today is in many ways full of disappointment, um, wherever you find yourself this morning, uh, we are... Um, that's me saying that. Uh, that we are nonetheless filled with joy in our hearts um, for the gifts that God has given us. So all the words that we're going to need to say together will appear on the screen, um, and we're going to have a lot of time to sing and to share and to encounter the Christmas story afresh. So let us uh, take a moment of quiet as we gather ourselves and prepare to welcome Jesus afresh into our lives this morning. My friends, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Well, let us stand and let us sing our opening song together. everyone. Jamie, can I borrow your services? <laughs> Would you be my candle lighter this morning? It's a little taper just there and the light behind you. Today is Christmas morning, the day in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus and recall the hope we have in Christ. So thanks be to God. We light our Advent candles of hope, peace, love, and joy. Our first candle, we speak of hope because God keeps his promises to us. For the second candle, we work for peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he calls his children to work for peace in his name. For our third candle, we show love because Jesus gave everything for us and led us to know the forgiveness of God. Our fourth candle marks us sharing in the joy of this day because the Holy Spirit fills our hearts and minds with the presence of God. And so now at last, on this special day, we light our last candle to remember the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as a reminder of his presence, the light shining in the darkness here with us, which we celebrate this holy Christmas morning. So let us pray together. Lord Jesus, light of light, you have come among us. Help us who live by your light to shine as lights in your world to the glory of God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jamie. Well, I know for many of us, Christmas Day has already begun. And some of you have been celebrating Christmas Day, um, perhaps at home um, with your families. And I wonder whether anyone here has already received a super awesome Christmas present. Whoa. So, do you, want to, uh, do you want to come up and tell us something that you've got? Or do you want to, yeah? Come on up. So, tell us about something that you got for Christmas today. Um, I got a Nintendo Switch. Oh! I know what the vicar's doing later. 
Amazing. That's very exciting. Now, what's the one game you're most excited to have on your Nintendo Switch? Or if you haven't got that far yet? No. Whoa. So much to look forward to. Right. Who else has got something exciting to share for Christmas? I'm saving yours for last, because yours is very exciting. And I understand you brought it with you. Excellent. Ted, come on up, buddy. Do you want to tell us one exciting thing you got for Christmas so far today? I got a Captain America robot that comes with one figure and a huge shield. Wow. Have you got it, Ted? Uh, yeah, I'll just... Should we do show and tell? <laughs> There's his huge shield. Wow. And why is he the best? From his America and my, and he's my favorite superhero. My work here is done. <laughs> Any other Christmas, um, Christmas fun things that anyone, now adults, I know you have not just been sitting there like sour sprouts being grumpy on Christmas day. Which adult in the room thinks they've got the most awesome Christmas present so far? Lizzie, of course. Up you come. Up you come. It's Christmas Day. So, go on. I've got a new kitchen. Woo! And what a kitchen it is. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So, Lizzie is going to be hosting Boxing Day lunch for everyone in church. So, if you're hungry, head on down. All right, Emma. Is it really? Alice, present your exciting Christmas present. I've only been told that there is an exciting Christmas present. I haven't actually been told what it is, but I, oh, I see it. And it looks, it looks exciting and disturbing in equal measure. So what is this? It is a dancing, singing cactus, and uh, Tim is going to accompany it. Awesome. And I expect you to do the cactus dance whilst you're singing. Exactly. All right, let's go for it. Get your wiggle on, Tim. I feel like I need my shades for this one. It's only 17 minutes long, don't worry. Wow. Yes. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> you're up next, David, so be careful. <laughs> well, it's lovely, lovely to have presents at Christmas time, isn't it? Um, and we know that. Um, our tradition of giving gifts to each other uh, is rooted in something actually really quite profound, um, which is that Christmas isn't about what we do. It's about what God has done for us. And it's about God's gift to us and to all the world in giving us his son, Jesus. Um, and when we did our, um, our carol service, there was a, a song that was played in the video that we showed. And the refrain of that song was all I want for Christmas is your Christmas presence with us. And that is indeed the deepest gift of all, God's very presence gifted to us in the manger. Well, shall we uh, rejoice in that gift as we stand together and sing some more carols together while shepherds watched? Shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated. 
dark seas that troubled mind, glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is dawn of David's line, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed all merely wrapped in swaddling bands and in a manger lay all glory be to God on high and on the earth be peace good will henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease and we will follow that with a picture a perfect picture of a Christmas morning all white and crisp well not quite <laughs> but for me my heart is half here and half in the other side of the world where my mom is and they are sitting by the pool in about four hours because it's going to be about 40 degrees so there you go <laughs> so whether we are in the winter snow or in the biggest sunshine Jesus is here See, I'm in the winter snow, born for us on earth below. See, the Lamb of God appears, promised from eternal years. Hail the ever-blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn. Oh, 
Except for you, Tim. Right, I need two volunteers. One of them is going to be Tim. And one of them is going to be Ryan. Thank you for volunteering, lads. Appreciate that. <laughs> right, come have a seat. And you can... Uh, you have a buzzer between you. Right, we are going to have a Christmas quiz. Uh -oh. So this is true and false. To what extent is the following statements actually reflect what happens in the biblical story of Christmas? Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> so you've got to be the first of the buzzer, and I'm going to need my audience to let me know which one got to the, their buzzer first. The... First question, the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary first and then appeared to Joseph. True. It's false. Oh. Was that a test one? <laughs> Next question, there are no records of Joseph speaking in the Christmas story. True. That is correct. Oh. A point to Ryan. Next question. Joseph married Mary immediately after the angel appeared to him. False. True. Incorrect. <laughs> Next question. Yeah. One point to zero at this point. Ryan's in a commanding lead. Next question. Both Joseph and Mary were told that the baby was to be named Jesus. True. Two points to Ryan. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll best it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Next question. Mary rode a donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. True. False. <laughs> she may well have done, but the story doesn't tell us. Which breaks my heart, really, at one level, because the donkeys are a very important part of my journey into Christmas. So, next question. We'll get there, Tim. Don't worry. <laughs> You're very good at the buzzer, though. I, I'm the right. The wise men were three kings from the Orient. Nah, True. <laughs> Bless your heart, Tim. No. They were magi, which means wise men, not kings. False. Next time I'm going false. Right. Next question. The wise men did not arrive on the night of Jesus' birth. True. That is correct. Yay. They came later. What's the score? Three nil. Three nil. Three nil. Oof. Sounds like a football score. All right. I'm used to this. <laughs> Next. Shepherding was considered a very noble occupation at the time of Jesus. Oh, it's broken. True. False. <laughs> this is impressive. No, Timothy. <laughs> they were stinky. Right. Next question. After the angel's announcement, the shepherds went straight to Bethlehem to see Jesus. False. 
Now you're just having a laugh, Timothy. You're rigging the game. No, they ran straight away. They were so excited. Right, next question. A little drummer boy came to the manger after the other shepherds. False. There were no drums involved. However, however, what is the best Christmas present? A broken drum. You can't beat it. <laughs> right, let's carry on. Some shepherds, boys, are you listening? I normally say that to them, but I'm saying it to you. That just rolled off the tongue for some reason. <laughs> some shepherds doubted and refused to believe the message when they heard it from the angels. False. That is false. There was no doubting on behalf of the shepherds. But here's a question for you. What do sheep say to shepherds at Christmas time? Seasons bleatings. <laughs> right. How about Herod? When Herod heard about Jesus, are you listening? Yeah, we're listening. Sorry, sorry. Serious moment. Right. It's quiz time. When Herod, yeah, exactly. When Herod heard about Jesus, he was the only one concerned about this new king. You're competing against each other, you realize. I'm going to go true. It is false. <laughs> and all Jerusalem with him was troubled. Now, how does good King Wenslis like his pizza? Well, we need a distraction. Deep pan, crisp and even. Deep pan. Right, the wise men found Jesus lying in a manger in the town of Bethlehem. True or false? The wise men found Jesus lying in a manger in the town of Bethlehem. Ryan said false. Ryan needs to speak for himself, thank you very much, Timothy. <laughs> All right, I say false. You've got a point, Tim! Yes! And I didn't think we were going to have a second Christmas miracle. <laughs> now, what type of key do you need for a nativity play? You should know this one, Tim. A monkey. A donkey! Oh, donkey. <laughs> what did Adam say to Eve before Christmas? It's Christmas! Eve? Eve. <laughs> And this one's for my mother-in-law. I'm going to save this one for when we go to Guildford tomorrow on Boxing Day. What happened to the man who fell into the upholstery machine? Well, good news. He fully recovered. <laughs> oh. All right. Last, last, last joke, and then we'll announce our winner. <laughs> Keep you in suspense. What Christmas carol did the Magi sing as they followed the star? O oh, camel ye faithful. Well, I think by unanimous consent, um, the most entertaining oh. <laughs> of our contestants was Timothy. Yeah. And the one who actually paid attention and took the quiz seriously and therefore wins is Ryan. Let's have a big round of applause for both of them. Right, now we're going to go from the uh, ridiculous to the sublime, and we're going to have our reading <laughs> from Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place, or Quirinus was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. 
She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the God shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which are just as they've been told. Thanks be to God. I'm really sorry I didn't get the dress code. But it's probably just as well as we were singing in our first hymn that we need to be led to worship by a star. Not too late, Jamie. Not too late. Do you know, it's also probably just as well I didn't get the dress code because, you know, I married my, my wife for her looks. Mind you, not the one she gives me when I show her the text of my sermons. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, COVID's amazing, isn't it? If you think about it, you'll talk about dress codes. I bet you that someone was told by their mum that they'd never get on if they didn't get out of bed. And look at them now. They're running an entire sales operation in their pyjamas. <laughs> Do you know, Ben is definitely the cleverest man in this room by a long way. He's a doctor of cleverness. And so, Tim, you know, you don't need to worry about not knowing it all. But Ryan, obviously, you're sort of putting in a, a, a run for this. But would, would you like me to show you that actually even Ben doesn't really know everything? Yes? Yes? Ben. Yes, Jane. <laughs> what would you call Dasher when he gets old and weary and he loses the sight in one eye? Mm. I am stumped. I don't know. Anyone? What would you call Dasher who'd lost the sight in one eye? I've no idea. A one idea. Yeah. Now, oh, what, what, would, what would happen, Ben, and only you can answer this one, what would happen, Ben, if he loses the sight in both eyes? You see, I told That's you. That's very clever. He's got no idea. No idea. <laughs> that is the one. Let me just say a word of prayer. Before you do, Jamie, I've got a question for you. See, if you know all the things, okay, two can play this game. <laughs> what do you get if you cross a pig and a telephone? A lot of crackling on the line. <laughs> That's it, I'm done. <laughs> Very good. I'm sure two can, can play at this game and may continue to do so in a minute, but let me pray. <laughs> Father God, thank you. Thank you, you sent Jesus to be with us, to be for us, to be the joy of this world and to bring good news. May a little of what we think about now inspire us to follow him and bring him to others. Amen. Amen. Now I need the um, mic. There it is. Because I, I, I want to ask, who likes history? You like history. Why do you like history? Because you can learn from your mistakes in the past. Ooh, learn from your mistakes in the past? Very good. Who else likes history? Yeah, Dennis at the back. Because there are a lot of lessons to be learned. There we go. These, we're looking back, we learn from the past. One more, one more. Who likes history? 
Because they all start with someone's story. Because it's always starting with someone's story. Isn't that lovely? Now, you know, Luke, in writing that story, did you notice how he positioned all of what followed with a verifiable fact that Caesar Augusta decreed that there should be a census in Palestine when Quirinius was governor. You know, the Romans were fastidious record keepers. And so we can check that fact. And we know for certain that it's true. And isn't it amazing what follows is sort of kind of, you would never believe it. You would never have been able to write it. That there were, an, that there were angels bursting out of heaven. History is such an important thing because it puts us where we need to be. But in history, extraordinary things have happened. Even more extraordinary things like, do you know what uh, um, William the Conqueror and Kermit the Frog have got in common? They both have the same middle name. So why shepherds? Why shepherds? Would anyone like to be a shepherd? Me. Why would you like to be a shepherd? Because, because it means looking after sheep and I like animals. Animals, lovely. Who else would like to be a shepherd? Anyone like to be a shepherd? Anyone like to be a shepherd? You'd like to be a shepherd. You don't know whether you'd like to be a shepherd. Would any of us grown-ups like to have been a shepherd? No. Not really. Why not? Why wouldn't you like to have been a shepherd, Mr. Sparks? Being outside all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? Why wouldn't you like to be a shepherd? It's dangerous work. Dangerous. It would have been. It would have been. It would have been very dangerous for those shepherds. Do you think that those shepherds were important people? Were they important people, shepherds? Yes, they were. They were important people. Why? Yeah. Well, they, they were out on the hillside all the time and they were looking after the sheep. They were looking after the sheep. Do you know, we don't know this for certain, but probably those shepherds that the angels have come to had been looking after the sheep that would have been taken as sacrifice in the temple. And the extraordinary thing about those shepherds and why God came to announce this good news to shepherds is because shepherding is very close to God's heart. And the prophets, who had been silent for about 400 years, had been continuously reminding the people of the need for a good shepherd. And here was the Lamb of God, who was going to be the sacrifice for all our sins, coming, and so it would be to the shepherds. So these shepherds were not religious people because they were unclean. They were cut out of being in the religious circles. They were not important people. They were not like the priests or the rulers and governors. But they were performing something that is so close to God's heart. And God was sending us the true shepherd. You see, the prophets have been uh, telling the people for ages that the people were like sheep without a shepherd. Or we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to their own way. And Ezekiel prophesied how without a shepherd the people are devoured. And Jeremiah talks about the sheep being scattered. And here were the angels announcing, here comes the true shepherd. And I like what Paul wrote to the church in Corinth about this. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put shame to the things which are mighty. And base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. So the shepherds were despised, in fact, because they were outside of the religious uh, ordinances because they couldn't be made clean. 
and it probably wasn't a, the noble uh, a calling that it had been to the patriarchs. And all because the people had lost their shepherd. They had turned away from God. And doesn't that chime too with what Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices because he has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. And so we get that lovely image too of these magi who are living like kings coming from the east. They come and bow down. But it's to the shepherds who the angels appear. Rejoice, go and see this child. And they do. Now we're told that as the glory of the Lord shone around them, they were terrified. So who's been terrified recently and what terrified you? Have you been frightened by something? I was frightened by sheep just recently. I was, I, I work, my working from home is at an office on the other side of the park at Mulsanger and I was walking back in the dark and suddenly there was this uh, stampede sound coming up behind me which was sort of awfully like um, an occasion when I was walking across Wandsworth Common in London and there was a sort of stepping behind me and then I, I knew nothing for about sort of four hours because I'd been beaten across the back of the head. Um, which didn't do, seem to do any d damage to my head because my head was already well damaged. But, but these sheep thundering up across the field towards me, thinking I was the shepherd, actually sort of was quite scary. Anyone, anyone else scared? Anyone got a scary story? What would you have felt like if you'd been on that hillside and the, 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 the angels of the Lord suddenly are singing? No? Any? It would have been quite scary. Well, the shepherds were scared, weren't they? But what does God say? God, through the angel, says, Don't be afraid, because I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. For today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born. You see, this simple story is of good news. But sometimes that good news is scary. It's scary because it's true, but it sort of blows your mind, doesn't it? Is this possible? Could it be possible? And we find ourselves actually even frightened to start to accept that it's true, to think that this story could change us just like it has changed thousands upon thousands of people before and must have changed those shepherds. I mean, that's why Luke writes about it, because he knows that if anyone goes asking for their shepherds, they will tell him that story. So the angel has the same message for us today. Don't be afraid. Why not look into it a bit more if you are just a little bit afraid? Why not sign up to do Alpha and start that journey for yourself of exploring, could it be true? Is this something that happened? Well, these shepherds, they hurried off to go and find out what they had been told. And lo and behold, they found it just as they had been told. So what might we take away from this story that we know so well? We've probably even been in a history play, in a nativity play. We know it inside out. Well, everyone but Tim. <laughs> Knows this story inside out. And so what could we take away? Well, we don't need to be anywhere special. We don't need to be anyone special. We don't need to be good. For God to be able to break into our lives and tell us some good news. We can't be too far away from God. We don't have to be religious. God gives us this story. Every Christmas, the same story. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born. Jesus is the one. Secondly, we're not alone in this journey. We often find ourselves feeling alone. We feel separated, particularly during this uh, COVID experience. We're separated from those we would like to be with. We don't get to spend time with people. But God is with us. God is for us. And just like these shepherds, who no doubt would be turning to one another for comfort, for warmth, for encouragement. Do you know, we can turn to Jesus. No one is better than he is. 
to come and give us encouragement, to give us support, to give us his love, to tell us he is with us and he is for us because Jesus is the one. And thirdly, we can be like the shepherds. When they went to see Jesus, they returned glorifying God and they spread the word. I wonder if I can encourage each one of us Spread this good news, that there is hope, that there is joy, that there is Jesus. He is the one. Amen. Well, we have an opportunity, even right now in this place, to respond to that invitation to encounter Jesus with us afresh as we stand and as we sing together. This is a new song, so we're going to do a little practice first. We're going to do the first verse twice, but it's super easy. I learned it, I think, so it will be great. The first verse goes like this. <clears throat>
Please have a seat, everyone. So in the stillness of this moment, let us offer our prayers for one another and for um, this beautiful, broken, and fragile world that God loves so much. Let us pray. We thank you, Jesus, for Christmas and for your gift of love for the whole world. We pray that your good news of peace would be heard everywhere. Help us to respond to your love with our whole hearts. Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for humbling yourself, for coming to earth as a baby child. Lord, please take our pride and help us to walk humbly with you. Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for choosing ordinary people like Mary and Joseph, like shepherds, to encounter and to serve you. Lord, we offer ourselves to you. Show us how we can serve you as well with our lives and our hearts. Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for choosing to be born into poverty Help us to make your love known to all peoples, especially those who are struggling in their lives. Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. We thank you, Jesus, for welcoming shepherds at your manger. Lord, enable your church to be full of your welcoming love to all. Child of Bethlehem, hear our prayer. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that at your birth at Bethlehem, you draw us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Savior and our eternal God. Amen. Well, shall we stand as we sing with the angels and the shepherds, Hark the Herald, Angels Sing.
Please do have a seat, everyone. Um, Alwyn, if we could have the uh, collection. So we know at the heart of the story, wise men come to Jesus bringing their gifts. And we also bring our gifts um, this day. Not for ourselves, but they may be a source of life and blessing to the mission of God's kingdom in this place. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the gift that is your people in this place. For those who are in this room, those who are watching at home, those who are connected to our family here. We thank you for the countless ways that you use um, this church to bring life and blessing into this community. Um, take this money, um, all the gifts that have been uh, offered um, in other ways, um, and use it to bless the growth of your church and your kingdom in our community. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. Shall we turn to those around us and in a COVID-appropriate way offer each other a, a sign of God's peace this Christmas day? Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Philippa, foot five, peace with you. Right, as we bring uh, our service towards its close, um, just have a couple of notices and then we're going to sing a final song and then receive some words of blessing. Um, I just want to say a, a huge thank you. Um, the list would be long and we'd be here till next Christmas if I decided to go down it person by person. But an this has not been a, a normal or a straightforward Christmas by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and there have been a lot of people who've been working tirelessly behind the scenes to, uh, to make everything happen. From the Christmas in Oakley program that gathered people from across our whole village together to mark the celebration, to those who've made our services happen. Um, we've done loads of um, hampers and blessing baskets for people who um, are in our community um, and, and on and on, a massive list. So I'm just immensely grateful to everyone um, and all your help and support this Christmas time. Uh, the, the special announcement that I have for today as I dance with the decorations behind me um, is, as you know, we have been... Um, advertising and preparing uh, the ground for a youth worker uh, here in our parish. Um, this is a, a vision that we've had for many years of someone who would come and be alongside our children and our young people. Um, and particularly in this time as we look around and we see the impact of the last couple of years on our young people's mental health and well-being. Um, it's really important to have advocates for our children and young people in our church and in our community. And so we, we, we prayed for a long time, we, we wrestled over this, and we felt that we wanted to invest in a really big way in our children and young people here in our church. And so we thought we'd take a bold move, not to just um, appoint a youth worker part-time, but full-time, not just for one year, but for three years, and just get the ball rolling and see what God wanted to do with it. And so we had a gift day in November and have been raising funds for the project over the last two months. And I am really excited to say that as of this morning, um, we have raised, we needed to raise 90,000 pounds in order to fund this post in full for three years. And as of today, we've raised 95,218 pounds. So within the first wave of asking, um, God has stirred up the generosity in the hearts of the people, and we have already completely met our target in full and beyond um, to have a full-time youth worker here for the next three years, which is absolutely amazing. I cannot even say how blown away uh, we are by the response that we've had for this. Um, the advertisement is live right now, and we're hoping to have interviews the first week of January um, to then appoint for the new year. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who's contributed and pledge support for this project. And I just really request your prayers that God would bring the right person into this role 
um, and that they would be a blessing uh, to our community and to our church family here. Um, the uh, last thing I wanted to say by way of, of notices is that we've got Boxing Day as a Sunday tomorrow, and I've done us a little uh, recorded service, which will be available as a throwback to 2021 in church at home style, so you can enjoy that from the comfort of your own lounge um, at home. Shall we repair Spider-Man in just a second, buddy? Is that all right? I'll do it when we sing our next song. Um, so I just want to, on behalf of everyone here at St. Leonard's, just wish you and your households, everyone watching and at home, just a very Merry Christmas. Um, we love you all, and it's been a wonderful journey having this time together um, here uh, in Oakley and in Woodton. So shall we now stand, and shall we bring our service towards its close with our final uh, carol, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Let's go and tell it from the rooftops, the mountains, and wherever we find ourselves. And let's start that proclamation now by speaking words of blessing over our community. In the name of Jesus, we bless our community and all who live and work here. We bless those in need with God's encouragement, healing, and comfort. We bless the people we know, love, and care for with God's peace. And we bless each person that they would know God's presence and his love this Christmas and evermore. Amen. And so to each and every one of you, 
to every household you represent and to all those near and far who are on your hearts this Christmas. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. And may the blessing of the holy and undivided Trinity be upon you this Christmas and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Well, on behalf of everyone at St. Leonard's and Wooden St. Lawrence, Happy Christmas, everyone! Yeah.